Hey guys, it's Boy from Homebrew for Life. CH is in the bathroom taking a dump. He'll be out in a minute. And today what we're gonna do, force carbonate the keg, which is crucial to know as a home brewer because that means you'll be drinking beer sooner, faster, longer, stronger. And that's what kegging beer and drinking beer is all about. Put your beer in the fridge the night before. It's very important that the beer is cold before you try and carbonate it. And what's that called? Uh, force carbonating? No. Cold crashing. Cold crashing. Cold crash. You want to cold crash the beer the night before you get it nice and cold. All right, guys, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to sanitize our keg. First thing you want to do is take the lid off. You want to make sure there's no pressure in here. This little thing right here is called a PRV, a pressure release valve. And we pull that up. There's nothing coming out. You'll normally hear like a tsh. And you want to make sure all the pressure is relieved or it'll be really hard to get this lid off. <laughs> so you basically pull this lever up, give it a little twist, and this thing pops out pretty easy. We're gonna set that off to the side and then we're going to dump our sanitizer in here. So we put the lid on here and then close that PRV. Make sure the lead, lid is seated, seated correctly. And we're gonna flip it over and get the uh, that side sanitized first and then we'll flip it over after it's sat for about a minute or two. All right guys, so here we are. We just finished sanitizing our keg and what we're gonna do is hook up CO2 to the tank and use CO2 to push the sanitizer out of the keg. The reason this is important, a lot of people sometimes will just open the lid and dump the sanitizer out. The reason this is important is because it's going to help push all the oxygen out and only fill the keg with CO2, which will help keep your beer from oxidizing. But what we have here is a faucet. It's got a little black connector. These posts down here look very similar, but they are not. One says out, one says in, sometimes it says gas, sometimes it says beer. But black is for beer, beer comes out of the keg or sanitizer. You wanna snap that on right there. And then we've got our CO2 here. Gray is for gas. Gas goes in, and it says in on the keg there. And we're gonna pump that on there, and we're basically just Pump sanitizer out. Oh, the other important part I just remembered is that it sanitizes the dip tube. A lot of times people put sanitizer in there, the sanitizer doesn't get in the actual tube that the beer goes through, and you wanna make sure that part gets sanitized too. And that's what we're doing right here. So we're pumping in CO2. CO2 is gonna force all the sanitizer out, and every part of the keg's clean and free of oxygen. Quick safety note, a lot of people are always worried when they're using CO2 and gases that something might explode or blow up, and they're scared of that factor. One thing to, to know about these kegs, these corny kegs, that we use in home brewing a lot is that the max pressure this keg can hold is about 130 psi it says right there this prv is meant to blow off at uh something way less i believe like 45 or probably like 50 psi but thing to realize is we're not using any more than 30 psi for anything that we're doing and you'll never even come close to something that's like dangerously explosive So what we're doing is pumping in CO2. CO2 is heavier than oxygen. So any little headspace we have left in our keg, we filled it up with beer, but there's still probably you know a few inches of air space. And again, oxygen is our enemy. So we're pumping CO2 in, letting it settle, and we're going to burp the keg. Just basically pull that up. You can hear that sound. It's gonna pump in more CO2. I'll let it settle for a second. I'll probably only need to do this like two or three times on each keg, and that way I know I've really pushed out all the oxygen. What we wanna do is force carbonate it. Uh, normally, it takes time, temperature, and pressure to carbonate a beer. But we're going to go and fast forward the time part of it by force carbonating. What I mean by that is we're gonna shake the keg by refreshing the surface of the beer and constantly pumping CO2 in, and it's going to cause the beer to become carbonated. It's very important that you actually have have some headspace, some actual airspace where CO2 can fill in. You never want to fill your beer all the way up to the tippy top with beer because then there's not any CO2 actually in there forcing its way into the beer. So when you make five gallons of beer, these kegs are actually five and a quarter gallons, which gives you that little bit of headspace. Now, if you have a bigger amount of space, let's say you made two gallons of beer, you have a bigger airspace and it'll take less shaking to carbonate your beer. So we're gonna count to 200 seconds for 500 gallons of beer. And we're basically gonna turn it on its side which makes the air bubble bigger and it's going to come in contact with more of the actual beer. And I'm basically going to just rock this back and forth and I'm going to count to 200. Like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven, eight, nine, twenty, twenty. Alright, don't film this whole thing. Don't film this whole thing. Two, six, seven, eight, twenty, thirty, one, nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two hundred. <laughs> Alright guys. We don't want to come up here. Here we go. So we just finished shaking the shit out of our beer. It's very important that you wait about 30 minutes because you just shook it up. It's gonna be very foam if you try and pour it right away. So what we're gonna do is put it back in the fridge.
So we just let our beer sit in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna purge our keg. It's at about 25 PSI. We're gonna reconnect it to our CO2 tank. We're gonna turn our CO2 tank down to about 10 PSI and we're gonna drink it and check it out. It's pouring great. If you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel. If you didn't like this video, don't subscribe, but check us out on Twitter. And that is how you carbonate your beer in 30 minutes.